a very good morning to one and all present here so this is akriti from let's educate team and uh, here we have shavani shavani is from i can accomplish she has uh, a, she is a psychologist and a, she she is a um, counseling psychology in i can accomplish so and this is akriti bandwal from let's educate team i had done my mba from ibs hyderabad and here we all going to discuss about uh, some some a lot of things about uh, psychology domain so i think shavani you please take this uh, uh, forward from here yes so a warm welcome to one and all present here and thank you miss akriti for such a warm introduction and i'm more than happy and more than thrilled to address and welcome all of you today and i thank everybody to be for being here with all of us Uh, on a saturday morning so we really really appreciate that so as miss uh, akriti introduced me i am a counseling psychologist by profession and uh, today we are going to talk about a very very important topic which is on adolescence okay and before that i would like to thank miss akriti again and the let's educate team for giving us the opportunity to get connected with all of you so thank you very much and good morning once again so i will just yeah so we are going to talk about a very important topic which is adolescence the crisis prevention and cure of adolescence so through this workshop we are going to understand about what this phase of adolescence is all about what happens in the bodies and the minds of these people and how do we as important stakeholders as teachers as parents bring a change in the journey of these adolescents and make their journey a much much smoother one so teachers and parents somewhere we believe that you are very very important stakeholders in the lives of our children right because it's only through teachers that we get to know that there are there may be some concerns in the child if the teacher observes the child if they may see that the child is showing regress in academic performance or there is some regress in behavior or they are just showing some dynamics some some changes in their behavior and uh, uh, academics right so it's only through you that we come to know that there must be some concerns in a particular child and which is why we want to uh, present this workshop for all of you teachers in order to empower you so that we get the uh, actual help and support from all of you in providing the right interventions for our students at the right time so in this workshop this is what we are going to discuss throughout our aim is to make this workshop very very interactive so we have some nice uh, uh, ice breaking activities for all of you which we expect and we hope that you will uh, you know perform and participate in those activities so with this on this note we move ahead with understanding some of the key facts for uh, what is this concept of adolescence and what are some of the important highlights when we talk about adolescence so as the slide reads adolescents occupy one in six people in the world fall in the age group of 10 to 19 years which means so many adolescents around us right it also says that mental health conditions account for about 16% of danger to adolescents that means 16% of adolescents either have some kind of mental conditions or some kind of behavioral conditions in them which is quite a huge number right then we have 20% of adolescents who are more likely to experience mental health conditions at least in a year every time which again is a very very alarming number and the last point is one of our favorite points which talks about 7% of the young population have bounced back to normalcy which means 7% of adolescents in this age have bounced back to normalcy after they have received the right kind of interventions and teachers and parents with your help and with your support we want to aim for a much much larger number than 7% we want many children to be empowered to come out of what they are going through by providing the right interventions at the right time and i think your support is very very important for us in all this journey right so together i think we should aim and target to reaching this number or taking this number to a much larger extent so i hope i was clear in explaining this uh, slide so when i say that we would want to keep the workshop or this webinar interesting and as well as interactive so please feel free to drop in your comments to ask queries and we are sure to address all of your questions and queries towards the end of the workshop uh, towards the end we will also talk about what i can accomplish is what we are who we are what do we do till then let us move for uh, further with this slide 
which talks about what we are going to understand from today's workshop. Now, in this webinar, we are going to understand the entire phase of adolescence. So what are the stages of adolescence? What is it that they go through? Some of the psychological changes, the physical changes that they go through. The very important concerns, alarming concerns that adolescents of 21st century face today. And after which we are going to find out the ways some of the coping mechanisms as teachers, as parents, what is our role in order to help these adolescents in order to make their journey a much, much smoother one. And you also have some takeaways for, for all of you, some value adds that you will uh, really, really like to keep in mind after this seminar. So on this note, let us move ahead and make our workshop a little more interactive by this small icebreaker activity. So one of you can just unmute yourself and let me know which one of the logo is correct. We have the logo of the Burger King, the Google Chrome browser, and the Android. So come on, teachers, let's make it interesting. Any one of you who can tell me which one of the logo is correct? You can try. There's nothing like wrong and right. We are just here. We are. It's mutual learnings that are going to happen in this workshop. <clears throat> Anybody? Uh, the Burger King first one is the correct logo. Okay, first one is correct. Thank you, Mr. Shmita. Okay, you want to try for the next one as well, Chrome? Uh, yeah, in the Chrome also, the first one is correct. Okay. And in the on the Android, mm, no idea. <laughs> no problem, but at least you tried. I mean, really, really thank you, Mr. Shmita, for such a quick response. So, uh, yes, the answers are... The Burger King, the second logo is actually correct. The Chrome, again, the second logo is correct. And Android, if you look closely, both the logos are correct. So, <clears throat> can again tell me, so Sushmita, Mr. Shmita, thank you. Nice try. Thank you very much. And uh, can anybody tell me what could be the rationale or what could be the intention behind uh, taking up this kind of an activity for a webinar on adolescence? Any idea? <clears throat> Any one of you? <clears throat> Come on, teachers, parents. It's okay. You, we are not expecting everybody to be right. There is nothing called right and wrong. Come on. Students and adults almost they are similar actually, and uh, we have to identify them. Actually. Correct. Very true. Thank you, Miss Neha. So as Ms. Neha rightly said, uh, the rationale or the intention behind this kind of an activity is to emphasize the importance of observations, right? As I mentioned earlier as well, that you teachers are very important stakeholders because it all starts from your observations. You observe that there is something wrong in a particular child, maybe a virtual setup, maybe a physical setup now. The moment you observe that there is some concern in this particular child, only then the next process starts and only then the child it may get the right interventions at the right time. So this activity was only to help you understand that observations and minute observations for that matter are very, very important. So next time I believe, you know, it's a long weekend and I hope that if you all order anything from Burger King, I'm sure the first thing you will look at will be the logo, right? So thank you very much for participation, uh, teachers and parents. With this note, on this note, we start and move ahead with the next slide, which talks about uh, the pictures of something, right? So can somebody again unmute themselves and tell me what is it that these pictures might depict? The pictures that you see on the screen, what these pictures could tell us? <clears throat> there is a girl who is raising her hand, not wanting to listen. There is a girl who is arguing with her parents, some kind of a magazine picture, some kind of or uh, heavy metal music picture, or adolescents who are, or children who are uh, kind of exposed to internet, what this could be depicting? Behavior of the children. Right, very children. true. Yes. Thank you, Miss Neha. Anything else you were saying? Uh, that means, uh, means in the... I'm sorry, we lost you. We are not audible, Miss Nia. We are pressure. I am traveling. No problem. 
very true so i think you said something like peer pressure and behavior in children right all right so this is yeah. what the entire thank you miss neha so this is what the entire all these pictures depict the entire phase of adolescence so they may not want to listen to their elders they may want to always go into these argumentative modes they will be exposed to a lot of internet lot of technology lot of internet browsing and surfing may be addicted towards internet they may be exposed and attracted towards a lot of different kind of music genres like heavy metal hip hop and pop music and they may also be attracted infatuated and you know more and more leaning towards all these fashion brands and how do i look up all these makeups and all those things so these pictures depict the entire phase of adolescence their behavior the crisis what they go through and this is what we are going to discuss in today's seminar all about the adolescence phase and the ways to help them i hope i am clear till here all of you teachers with this we move forward to understanding the important concept which is on adolescence now what is this adolescence what does the term adolescence actually mean now if you look at the typical uh, dictionary uh, ex uh, explanation of the term adolescence it means that it refers to a transitional phase from a child to being an adult which means it is a growth phase a developmental phase and it starts from the onset of puberty until the child reaches adulthood the who the world health organization says that this age comprises of people between the age group of 10 to 24 which means it's an extensive age and given with this extensive age range comes a lot of physical changes a lot of psychological changes in a given point in time and all this is what we are going to discuss in this webinar and the some of the striking features of this adolescence could be uh, the distinguished search of self who am i what are my responsibilities identifying oneself identify the self character and there is increased decision making power that they want to decide for themselves they wouldn't want to listen to others they wouldn't want to listen to their parents to teachers they want to take up the decisions for themselves so a striking feature of adolescence you may find that there is increased decision making and there is an increased search of, of self so i hope i'm clear with this slide which talks about the definition or explanation of adolescence we now move forward to the next slide which talks about the stages now that i've said that adolescence is a phase right so it ought to have many many stages some of the stages of adolescence are broadly categorized into three important stages as you can see on the screen and they are early adolescence middle adolescence and late adolescence now in early adolescence the age range is between 10 to 14 years and it starts by the onset of puberty which means there are a lot of psychological and uh, physical changes that happen in your body like the girls will <clears throat> start with their menstrual cycle the boys will also have some changes in their body in terms of having hair growth in terms of having a mustache a beard and so on and all these changes these children are aware of so they know that their body is changing they know that their body is growing up so they are actually aware of these changes now this gives rise to an increased curiosity and anxiety curiosity about the own body curiosity about the body of the opposite sex or the opposite gender and this gives rise to an anxiety feeling of anxiety as in am i looking good is my appearance presentable am i beautiful so all these things tend to create a lot of anxiety in adolescents of this age and obviously the focus is more or the inclination rather would is towards their peers and not around their family so they tend to have those boundaries from their families and from their parents and they are more inclined to go towards their peers or their friends so this is what happens when a child is in his or her early adolescence phase coming to the next point we have something like middle adolescence now middle adolescence occurs between the ages of 15 to 17 years small age range but it's when the they are kind of settled by the beginning of puberty the children the girls as i mentioned earlier will be quite settled with their menstrual cycle they are expecting that they will have these cycles every month the boys are kind of trying to get uh, uh, you know comfortable with the changes in boys earlier we find that they may show some kind of reluctance towards not wanting to talk because of the change sudden change in voice but now they may be in, again initiating conversations initiating to talk to their families their friends and they are adjusting to this change in voice so basically what happens in this phase is that children tend to get comfortable with their physiological changes 
Then there is again an increased drive to become independent. They are close to suggestions from others, close to advices from others, especially their friends and families. And peer pressure, it reaches at its peak, like I mentioned earlier in the adolescence, uh, early adolescence phase, that they are more inclined towards their peer pressure, peers and friends. In this particular group, the peer pressure, it's at its peak. They do not want to listen to their family. I want this because my friends have it, or I want to do this because my friend is doing this. It's something like, you know, will be a part of your daily conversations if you have an adolescent back home, am I right? Then next, lastly, there is impulsive, aggravated impulsive behavior. They may not, wouldn't, they may wouldn't, they would not want to listen to a no. They may always be on their guards of becoming very defensive, becoming very aggressive in nature. So this is what happens in middle adolescence. Coming to the last part, which talks about late adolescence, it usually occurs between the ages of 18 to 24 years. Now, as compared to early and middle adolescence, late adolescence children or children in this particular phase appear to be quite settled. There is increase in cognitive development. So concepts like rational thinking, abstract thinking, decision making in the right sense, all these concepts start to develop, develop in this phase, giving rise to a lot of cognitive development. So there is also some kind of emotional stability that these children experience. They don't tend to get overwhelmed by many, many experiences or many emotions. And there is some kind of emotional stability that seeps in then they're also able to measure or be calculative of their risks and rewards. So this thought of, I want to have a settled career in my life, so I will have to work hard. This thought kind of seeps in in them, which gives rise to a mature thinking. So we say that, right, uh, my child has become matured. My child is showing so much of maturity. So this is because of all these kind of cognitive development, onset of emotional stability and so on. With this, Obviously, there is a lot of moral development also, the sense of self, am I doing something that is right? Am I doing something that is wrong? If I'm doing something right, I should go ahead. If I'm doing something wrong, I should probably stop. So a lot of bifurcation and decision making in terms of right and wrong seeps in, in this kind of uh, phase, this type of phase. So just to summarize, parents, uh, we have the stages of adolescence, early adolescence, which comes in uh, the ages of 10 to 14 years. Middle adolescents ages of 15 to 17 years and late adolescents in the ages of 18 to 24 years. So teachers, am I clear till here? Any doubts, please note down and we can address towards the end of the workshop. So after we move on <clears throat> from the stages, we now move on to the changes in adolescence. Like I mentioned before, adolescence is a very, very extensive phase, right? So it ought to have many, many changes. So we have broadly classified the changes into physical changes and psychological changes. Now, what happens in this physical changes? I mean, it is all outward behavior, right? You will you'll obviously be able to make it. But some of the highlights of uh, adolescents and their physical changes could be the onset of puberty. Like I mentioned before, the menstrual cycle, there could be some changes in their bo uh, overall body structures, body physics, that we suddenly increase in height and increase in weight. And why do all these things happen? Because of the release of certain hormones, hormonal changes, especially the growth hormones, which is why you see sudden growth spurts in your children. Uh, there is increased or decreased appetite. Some children may want to eat a lot. Some children may just wouldn't want to eat. Their metabolism rate also shows a lot of changes. Some may eat a lot, but uh, they may not put on, but which is why some of them may be otherwise. So there are a lot of changes that happen in their appetite and their sleep patterns. Voice in the boys change, just like the girls undergo some physical changes, the voice in the boys is also changed and there are development in certain sexual characteristics. Now coming to the psychological changes, we have many psychological changes which talks about that communication skills tend to change. So some may be quite open in terms of their communication, like they may be feeling or they may feel extremely open to talk about their attraction of opposite gender, their relationships, or on the other hand, some may go into a kind of shell that they may just uh, be introverts or they may just want to become quiet. Suddenly, they may not want to address people or they may not want to attend any family gatherings. So all these communication changes try to seep in uh, as a part of psychological changes. There are 
there are quite increased mood swings at one point in time you may find your child to be extremely happy at the same time you will find the child to be extremely sad and if you ask why is it so why are you feeling sad or unhappy you may suddenly find them jumping from sad to getting annoyed so mood swings are a daily routine for adolescents and there are a lot of other concerns like there is a lot of self consciousness seeping in which gives rise to self doubt am i looking good am i looking uh, okay to be accepted in the group oh my god i think my nose is just a little too puffy so all these things come under being self consciousness which gives rise to a lot of self doubt and then there is a chain vicious circle which gives rise to self esteem issues self confidence issues and so on they are extremely sensitive towards feelings as well they are very very vulnerable to accepting or no they may face emotional turmoils and like i mentioned before also increased dependency is on peers so they may just go with the fact that whatever their peers say they may want to do it ignoring the fact that parents are at home and they may give them the correct suggestions which gives rise to a lot of risk taking behavior in this kind of phase so this is this was all about physical and psychological changes in adolescence now moving further we come to a very important slide which talks about the adolescent concerns now uh, uh teachers i would like to bring in uh, this fact that the concerns that we have mentioned in this particular slide are some of the very very common concerns that all of us must have faced in school our school lives or all of us must be seeing in our school in most of the children of these age right so these are some of the common concerns that every adolescent must be going through so the first concern uh, that you can see on the screen is inflated or deflated self esteem and confidence now what is inflated and deflated me inflated and deflated are nothing but high self esteem and low self esteem so on one hand you may have many adolescents or many children in this age who are extremely high in their self esteem and self confidence who may be close to suggestions from others so they may think that they may know everything so they want they wouldn't want to take in any suggestions from their parents and even their peers for that matter because they feel that they are more than at par with others right so this gives rise to an increased or high self esteem and confidence on the other hand you may have children wherein they feel too little of themselves they may know all the answers in the class but they may still be scared or afraid to raise their hands why because they always have this feeling grappling around them that oh my god what if i give an answer wrong what if i raise my hand and i'm not, not able to speak what if i raise my hand and some other my friends or others in the class laugh at me so all these thoughts are kind of grappling them all around which is why it gives rise to a deflated or a low self esteem then there are increased amount of stress in them with all the emotions the emotional turmoil the physical changes psychological changes going on in their body there is a lot of stress that happens a lot of pressure from themselves to themselves to be a part of the group which gives rise to increased peer pressure now what is peer pressure so peer pressure basically is two or three members in the group trying to make an influence on the others right and why do they do this because they want to have a sense of power and res responsibility in a negative way so just because my friend is taking this decision i also want to support my friend or i also want to do this my friend has joined a guitar class i also want to join a guitar class my friend is having a guitar in her house even i want to have a guitar in my house no matter how much interested i am in playing a guitar i still want to do it because my friends have it my friends do it so there is a lot of peer pressure that seeps in and this is one of the very important concerns of adolescents today apart from that there is bullying so bullying may be either a physical bullying or verbal bullying where you make you make use of harsh commands harsh statements on others you may hit somebody harm somebody pinch somebody pull somebody's hair and this is one of the very very common concerns that adolescents face right and somebody may be a bully because he or she may want to show that power that i am powerful i would want to dominate you and on but the uh, on the other hand somebody may be a victim of bullying so bullying is another common concern that is seen in adolescents of this age now as we move further we are now going to talk about some of the very very grave and serious concerns that adolescents of this century or this era face and in the coming slide we are all going to discuss about internet addiction 
and i am sure all teachers and all parents present here would agree to the fact that this pandemic has given rise to a lot of screen time i'm sure you will all agree to me with this right so there's a lot of exposure for the screen on the internet there there is just no end to it continuous exposure after class there is something that is happening then they play games there is online chatting there is a lot of exposure in the sense of children tend to lose a track of their time right there is so much dependency on the internet that they want to feel want to get themselves isolated and they just want to be in front of their systems in front of their screens which means there is no communication with people at home there is no communication with their actual real life friends everything goes virtual for them there is isolation from friends and family there is a feeling of euphoria now what is feeling of euphoria mean euphoria means extreme happiness the moment they come to or get to play with any kind of video games or activities on the internet they get on chatting with their virtual friends anything to do with the internet makes them or puts them in a state of euphoria which means of extreme happiness and this is often a lot of internet addiction is often followed by either a sense of guilt my god i should not have used internet so much today i should have you know not lost track of time or i should have put an end on internet use today at the right time so there is often a sense of guilt or there is often a sense of being a uh, sense of being defensive the moment you pinpoint at somebody like your adolescent they may be defensive over the use of internet so these are some of the concerns or symptoms of internet addiction now coming to the next point of depression now teachers here we are actually talking about the real or uh, clinical term depression uh, often we all may come across statements like oh my god i'm so depressed or i don't want to feel like doing that i'm extremely extremely depressed and this may be used for a simple connotation of feeling sad but in this particular slide or this particular topic we are actually referring to clinical depression which is marked by certain chemical imbalances in the brain okay and if you go to see the actual definition of depression it is it says that the dictionary says that it is a prolonged state of sadness wherein the uh, adults or anybody for that matter who are diagnosed with depression may not enjoy the regular day to day activities they once used to enjoy in terms of or in cases of school going students they may show regress in their behaviors regress in their academic performance they may suddenly go to go in a shell they may want to prefer they may prefer to be aloof there may be many feelings of guilt worthlessness helplessness that oh my god i should not have done this why did i do this why did i not listen to my parents i am just hopeless i am not worthy of being loved i just don't know what to do i don't know all when this all of this will end so all these thoughts are something that they are always and always grappled around with and obviously all this they are so succumbed to being with themselves that they have withdrawn from their friends withdrawn from their family they may wouldn't they may not want to connect with any anybody of them and they may always prefer to be alone so this was all about depression now coming to the next part of very important concerns is oppositional defined behavior we also call in psychology we also term this as oppositional defined disorder which is odd now odd or oppositional defined behavior is a behavioral concern or a behavior disorder which is marked by very very loud or bold defiance or bold disobedience towards elders especially towards authority figures so these uh, this uh, disorder affects 16% of school going children and children you may suddenly find the, uh, you know these children uh, will just get up from a class which is actually active or progressive in nature if they are doing something wrong and if you even tell them that because of your misconduct i would want you to meet the principal and these things may not scare them if something like investigation something like remarks in their diary calling their parents meeting the vice principal or principal of the school may not scare them they are just not they find it very difficult to adhere to the school norms which in turn gives rise to a lot of uh, you know effect on their work their school and their social life there are constant episodes of anger they are just not happy they don't want to be in school they find it difficult to follow the rules and norms of the school and lastly there is a lot of vindictive behavior now what is vindictive behavior which means a revengeful behavior maybe somebody has done something to them much unintentionally right but 
they may see to it that they take this revenge. If this boy has pushed me, I will see to it that next time I will push him. That poor boy may not even know that this he has accidentally pushed this fellow. But then this boy or this girl will try to show that vindictive behavior by showing back the revenge. So this was about oppositional defiant behavior. Coming to the next slide, we have self-injurious thoughts and suicidal tendencies. Now, these two things often go hand in hand because they are all a part of one of the important behavior concerns, which is impulse control behavior. And self-injurious thoughts and suicidal tendencies are both very, very unhealthy ways to deal with anger or frustration. Now, suicidal tendency teachers is a leading cause of death in adolescence, which is very, very grave and serious in nature, right? And both suicidal tendencies and self-injurious thoughts are very secretive behaviors and they often start from the age of 14 years and it involves cuts on your arms, cuts on your torso, cuts on your legs, their head banging, hair pulling and so on. This may at times also be seen as attention seeking behavior and also maybe give rise to a lot of uh, you know, thoughts that I am not okay or I can't do this or I can't deal with myself or with all this kind of things. So these self-injurious thoughts and societal tendencies are marked or maybe caused by a lot of trouble at the family backgrounds. There will be parental divorce going on, parental conflicts going on. There will be re repeated failures or there may be a lot of substance abuse, self-doubt of I am not good, I am not worthy of being loved, or there may be a feeling of insecurity in relationships. So all these, both these uh, self-injuries and societal tendencies need very, very immediate attention. As I said, we can't make out about these behaviors, right? And we can't make out very easily about these behaviors. But all is we have to do is we have to be very, very observant. So uh, I hope I was clear with the self-injurious thoughts and societal tendency features. We now move ahead to a very important part of the webinar, which is ways to help. Now comes our role. Now comes our very, very important role as teachers, as parents, about what we do to help our children, right? So the first way to help is for uh, is early identification. Now what comes in early identification is observing the child, noting the precise concerns of the child and asking relevant questions to the child. Now observing the child may be done in a physical setup as well as a virtual setup. The moment you see that the child is not performing as he or she used to earlier, or the moment you see that the child is not behaving as he or she used to earlier, it is your kind of a hint that there may be something wrong going on with the child. So you may have to be extremely vigilant in precisely noting down the concerns of the particular child. You may also ask relevant questions to the child or maybe you can seek help or seek assistance from your fellow teachers. You ask about are you the only one who is seeing these concerns or you also or the others are also being able to notice these observations. You may also get in touch with your parents to understand from them what is it that they are behaving or how is it that they are behaving at the home front. So this is what you can do in terms of early identification. And lastly, a very important point which talks about understanding transition as a phase. Now, we all know that how, how we uh, face difficulties to, for any age that matter, right? For example, a child moving from pre-primary to grade one, a child moving from uh, grade five to grade six, from secondary to higher secondary and so on. So transition as a phase is something that we need to accept. We need to be uh, accepting that children of this age are susceptible to changes and we need to attribute some factor to this transition, right? Mm -hmm. However, the moment you see that the changes are very, very extreme, the changes are sudden, the changes are prolonged, that is when your role comes uh, to be a very important of getting in touch with your school counselor, addressing the concerns to her, noting the precise concerns of what is it that you are seeing in the child in terms of changes, in terms of regress in their academics, or their behavior. So this was all about early identification. We next move down to establishing healthy communication. Now, there are many factors that contribute to healthy communication, right? There is extending respect, like as adults, we expect to be respected, right? But same respect has to be given, must be given to students of this age, rather 
students of any age for that matter it's a give and take relationship right so giving respect to your children giving respect to your students may develop the concept of trust that yes my parent trusts me or my parent respects me or my teacher respects me back which fosters effective communication which also helps you to build empathy towards the child or empathy towards your student and what is empathy empathy is to be able to put yourself into the shoes of others to understand their concerns from their perspective right so it builds empathize empathy and you are able to more effectively empathize with your child or your student now the next point talks about fostering self acceptance you know teachers i think this is one of the very very important point that we all we as therapists you as teachers and parents must practice which is fostering self acceptance and once you teach the child once we teach the child or the student to accept them as they are i think we're going to do away with all these concerns of low self esteem low self confidence low self doubt and so on right so fostering self acceptance which means accepting myself as i am what are my flaws what are my limitations what are my strength areas and how do i enhance my strengths and how do i work on my weaknesses is something that you will have an idea about only and only when you foster self confidence in your students and lastly teachers very important is to seek help and seeking help also at the right point in time right so i hope teachers with this slide you are all clear about how important your role as teachers is it all starts from you teachers observe it observing the child and making sure that you are providing the right kind of help to the child by communicating it with your counselors by communicating the same with your special educators in school you are the source of everything to us right from your observations you make sure that you are providing the right kind of assistance to your child yes or no so your role as teachers is very important uh, in the lives of us as well as in the lives of children right so and i hope uh, and i'm very confident about that we together as a team as all important stakeholders for our children will be able to bring that 7% the number 7% to a much larger extent because we would want to intervene children we would want to provide healthy interventions to all children who are in dire need of us so with this we come to you the come to the end part of uh, this workshop and we are going to give you some value adds or takeaways for this workshop and uh, so just to run through the slide as teachers as parents both we need to be aware of our own vulnerabilities when we were young back then what is the thing what are those all those things that we went through when we were adolescents or we were teens okay we have to remember all of these things how have we paved on our way or what is it that we did at that point in time and this will help us to understand our students and understand our children on a much better level next is we have to all accept that adolescence is not going to be easy with such an extensive age range it is given it's a fact that it is going to be a roller coaster ride we can accept it right we are always there we can always be there for our children for our students but what we have to do is we have to accept it's going to be a difficult journey we can sometimes go out of the way to appreciate them or to know about their passions to understand what they like to do what they love to do again this will foster healthy communication healthy building of relationships like trust acceptance and my god my parents are taking interest in what i like to do or my teachers are showing more interest in my passions they want to know more about me so this fosters healthy communication increase self confidence increase self esteem and so on and lastly we we should make sure that we should not overload them uh, with too many things because anyway many things are happening back there right so let's not overload them let us teach them that take one step at a time and you can all succeed and we are always there to help you succeed so these are some of the very easy takeaways which you can always remember and uh, when physical schooling starts we can always actually implement these strategies on all our children am i right teachers so with this we come to the end of uh, the webinar today like i mentioned earlier i would want to talk about who i can accomplish is what do we do so uh, teachers i can accomplish was born with the intention of helping children with special needs uh, and this pandemic has made us think a lot on this grounds that everything came back to normalcy right uh, we had our music classes opening on we had our uh, hotels opening on our dance 
classes opening on virtually everything was coming back to normal everything started up virtually but somewhere we felt that our special education needs area was worst affected was badly affected no there was nothing there was no therapy for special needs students whatever progress was made when children were in school whatever 20% progress was made by the counselors by the special eds there again was showing a lot of regress because there was no consistency which came to a thought that we should be there for our children and which is why i can accomplish came with a sense with an intention of providing virtual counseling and remedial students or remedial sessions to all special needs students now we not only provide sessions for uh, special needs students but we also provide counseling sessions those who are showing certain concerns with regards to their behavior with regards to their emotional handling maybe because of parental pressures parental conflicts family conflicts back home so we also support these children in terms of giving virtual counseling and remedial sessions to them uh, so i can accomplish basically has three offers three programs and as you can see on the screen it is accomplish transform accomplish must and accomplish more now in accomplish transform we provide pre assessment sessions to uh, exactly find out the area of concerns in the child after which we have one on one counseling or remedial sessions and we also provide free parent counseling sessions now in free parent counseling sessions we provide them with a lot of strategies okay we first try to empower the parent because just imagine the plight or the condition of a parent who is dealing with a special needs student right so we try to empower the parent with providing a lot of strategies to them uh, now you may just wonder like you know sare strategies to available hai google pe you have wikipedia you have youtube everything but we what we do in our sessions and in our uh, counseling sessions is that we provide or we focus on the interventions or the implementation part because we have dealt with the child because we know what are the needs of the child we help the parent in how to implement these strategies with your with your child so we also provide free counseling sessions to parents apart from that very important and striking feature of transform is that we also provide one counselor and one special educator to your school now the advantage or the biggest advantage rather would be that no child would be gone unnoticed if we provide you with a counselor or a special ed to your school even though we are providing you with one manpower there are a team or there are a team of 20 psychologists or special educators who are working us who are working for us for the child from the back end so we have a strong team of counselors and special education a team who are actually working on our children uh, that is all about accomplish transform then we have accomplish must if you do not want us to provide you with any of your <clears throat> any of our counselors or special educators all you can do as a school is identify certain children uh, in your school who are uh, who may be uh, special needs students and then from there we can take over by giving teacher training workshops again one to one counseling and remedial sessions and parent counseling sessions now how do we identify this so we have one more youtube video which we have uh, uploaded on our channel on identification of students with special needs so you, if you have not attended the last workshop of ours you can always go through that video and understand how do you identify students with special needs so if you are not wanting a special needs or a counselor from our school uh, to our to your school we can refer children to us and then we take over from there next is accomplish more which is uh, we talk about we do a lot of social uh, or mental health wellness programs because that is what the new education policy and the government also focuses on right and we have termed it as soch soch program so soch program is nothing but enhancing emotional learning in children and this is what we do with our children then we also conduct teacher need uh, need based teacher workshops and parent workshops with our teachers and our parents and it is all curated to the needs of the school so you may want to come up with a topic for your school get in touch with us and we will deliver the workshop to you so this was about accomplish more so just to give a gist about uh, i can accomplish we offer three programs accomplish transform accomplish must and accomplish more so i hope i was clear with this slide and the next slide talks all about us so who are we we have our website we have we are all on all social media handles on instagram on facebook and we also have a youtube channel where we have been uploading a lot of informative videos uh, from all our counselors and special educators so you may have a look back at them i request all of you to go to our website 
uh, which is icanaccomplish.com, uh, where uh, in the library section, you can, you will be able to see many, many such videos uh, with many important tools like, you know, to work on attention skills, to work on sitting tolerance and so on, which are very handy and very easy to practice with your children and your students. So have a look at them. And uh, with this, I conclude uh, the today's workshop, today's webinar. And I now look forward uh, to all the question answers round. Thank you very much. I hope the workshop was fruitful to all of you.